I'd like to say thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Go to squarespace.com slash polyphonic for 10% off your new website. In 1985, producer Elvis Costello approached the Pogues with a challenge. He wanted the band to write a Christmas song. Another version of the story says it was manager Frank Murray who asked the Pogues to cover a song, to which they responded they could just as easily make their own. Either way, the Pogues set out to write a Christmas song. That song took two troublesome years to develop and went through a number of versions in that time, but it was all worth it. When the Pogues came out the other side in 1987, they had created Fairy Tale of New York, one of the greatest Christmas songs ever recorded. Let's take a closer look. It's hard to understate just how big Fairy Tale of New York is. Since 2005, it's entered into the UK Top 20 like clockwork every Christmas, and in 2013, it got certified platinum. According to The Telegraph, it's the best-selling Christmas song of the 21st century in the UK. In a Christmas music scene filled with cheesy novelty songs, it's a depressing tune full of grime, grit, and genuine humanity. The earliest version of the song came from Jem Finer, the Pogues banjoist. That take was a far cry from the version we know now. It told the story of a sailor missing his wife, but Finer's own wife thought the story was a little too corny. She suggested an outline for the story that would become the fairy tale of New York. A couple falling on hard times and coming eventually to some redemption. This laid the groundwork that Shane McGowan and Finer spent the next two years honing. Most of McGowan's lyrics were written when he was bedridden after getting double pneumonia during a 1985 tour of Scandinavia. McGowan also came up with the title of the song. Elvis Costello had suggested Christmas Eve in the Drunk Tank, but McGowan opted for another option. He titled the song in homage to a novel by J.P. Dunleavy, which he had been reading at the time. While the plot of that novel is unrelated to the song, the spirit is there. It tells the story of Irish immigrants in New York. Another big influence on the song was Sergio Leone's film, Once Upon a Time in America. Ennio Morricone's score for that film even influenced the sound of the song. By the end of 1985, the band had a rough idea of the song, but demos from that time show that they hadn't quite gotten the magic yet. In the drunk tank, an old man said to me, Won't see another one. Finer told The Guardian about the band's drive to find the perfect sound for the song. Shane and I batted arrangements around for ages and we'd periodically try and record it. Shane's a tireless and meticulous editor. McGowan added his take on why the song took so long to write. It's by far the most complicated song that I have ever been involved in writing and performing. The beauty of it is that it sounds really simple. In 1986, the band started working with a new producer, Steve Lillywhite, who began to add his touches to the track. That's when the Pogues hit another hurdle. Kate O'Riordan left the group. Without her, the band had nobody to sing the female side of the duet. They had the idea of bringing in Chrissy Hind from The Pretenders, but they ended up settling on Kirsty McColl, who was married to Lillywhite. He recorded her vocals at his home studio and brought them to the band, who were floored and wanted them on the final song. All of the pieces had fallen into place and the band had their final product. When it was released a few months later, people immediately embraced the drunken tale. It tells the story of Irish immigrants who moved to America in hopes of living the American dream, only to find themselves desperate and hopeless on Christmas. Fairy Tale of New York is a dark song that embraces the struggles people face, even at Christmas. But it's also a jaunty fun ride that's a perfect drunken sing-along for any Christmas party. You're an old slut and jumpin' and they're almost dead and they're drippin' and bed. You scumbag, you 
I think it was such a successful song because it acknowledged that Christmas isn't magical for everyone and subverted a lot of these tropes, but at the same time, it has this fun, communal Christmas magic to it. It was a long road to create Fairy Tale of New York, but now the Pogues are cemented into the Christmas canon, and I don't expect they'll be leaving it anytime soon. I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can use designer templates to build your own website. Whether it's a new business, a creative pursuit, or a personal portfolio, Squarespace can help you build your website to your vision. They've got award-winning 24-7 customer service, online store capabilities, and simple domain hosting and transferring. I'm a big fan of Squarespace, and I've actually used them to build my personal portfolio site, so I can promise you it's a really fun, intuitive platform. So head on over to squarespace.com slash polyphonic to show them that I sent you. With that code, you'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Think it, dream it, make it with Squarespace.